Lizzie Velasquez doesn't wear her heart on her sleeve, she wears it on her wrist. They got me a the heart charm. Faith is very important to me. Five simple charms that represent the victorious story of what some might consider an uncharmed life of heartache, struggle, and pain. Lizzie is one of only three people in the world with a rare syndrome that does not allow her to gain weight. I was called skinny bones. That was a really big one. Um, skinny bones, grandma, because a lot of people told me I looked really old. Um, pork chop legs. Lizzie is 20 years old, blind in one eye, and has never weighed more than 62 pounds. Walking down the hallways to go to lunch or anything like that, kids would stop and point at me and make fun of me because I look different. Lizzie's the first to admit life hasn't been so easy. I would pray every single night that I would wake up in the morning and look like one of you. Classmates immediately shied away from her. There were some nights when I would go home and I would just cry and cry and cry um, in my room by myself and I would never tell my parents uh, that other kids were picking on me because I didn't want them to go to the school and like make a big seed. Lizzie says she privately endured years of stares and accusations of having an eating disorder before finally understanding her purpose in life as a messenger of hope and comfort. My faith, my family, and my friends are the three things that have gotten me where I am today um, and have definitely been a huge part in my turning point of realizing that I need to be positive about this. Lizzie is in college working toward a career as an inspirational speaker. Here, these sixth graders were hanging on her every word. Raise your hand if you've ever been bullied or picked on. For dumb reasons, right? If you have braces, if your hair is a certain way, maybe for the people you hang out with, and it's not fun, is it? Her okay, message is simple, stay go. true to <laughs> yourself. If I speak to a room of a thousand people and I affect the life of one person, that's all that matters to me. Lizzie is fully healthy. She's not fragile like she may appear, but as of today, there is no cure for her condition, and she says that's okay. I would never change it because all the opportunities, all the lives I'm being able to touch right now, I don't feel like I'd be able to do that if I didn't look the way I did. Those Lizzie has touched say she's an angel, sent to teach us all about kindness and acceptance. If I could live my life the way I do now, you can too, no matter what. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lizzie Velasquez. Thank you, thank you so, so, so much. I am so excited to be here. Are you guys excited to be here? Yeah? Okay, I want you to imagine something for me real quick. Can you do that? I want you to imagine that you're procrastinating doing homework. I know you all do it. Imagine you're procrastinating doing homework. You're at home, you're on the computer, you're looking on YouTube to listen to music. Imagine that. Imagine you see a video or a picture of, on the video that looks really familiar on the right-hand side of the screen. So you click on it, and you realize that what you see is a video somebody posted of you and labeled it the world's ugliest woman. Take a second, imagine what that would feel like. Or if you're a guy and they labeled you the world's ugliest man. Can you imagine how that would feel? Let me tell you how it felt, because it happened to me. I was at home, and the video was of me from a TV show when I was, that I was on when I was 11 years old. The video clip was eight seconds long, it had no sound, and it was titled The World's Ugliest Woman. I scrolled down only to find that there were over four million people who saw this video, four million. I continued to scroll down a little more, and I saw that there were thousands, 
and thousands and thousands of comments on this video. Not one was positive, not one. You know how I know that? Because I sat there and I read every single comment. I don't know why I did it, but I did. The comments range from people giving me tips on how to kill myself. They range from saying, you're so ugly. Why don't you just go out with the bag over your head? Because if people see you, they're gonna go blind. People are asking why my parents didn't abort me if they were gonna have such an ugly child. These comments literally felt like somebody was putting their fists through the computer screen and punching me over and over and over. As you saw in the video, I have a very rare undiagnosed syndrome. There's only three people in the entire world that we know of that have this syndrome. It doesn't have a name. I personally think it should be called the Lizzie syndrome. <laughs> Basically, what it causes is that I can't gain weight. I'm 23 years old, and I've never weighed over probably about 64 pounds my entire life. I can pretty much eat whatever I want, whenever I want. And let me tell you, it is that great. <laughs> Besides my weight problem, the other big thing with my syndrome, or we're not really sure how it happened, is that I'm blind in my right eye, so I can only see out of my left eye. And I kind of don't really remember the difference of being able to see out of both eyes, but the good thing that I have learned with my blind eye is that if any of my friends are kind of irritating me or annoying me, I have them stand on my right side, and it's like they're not even there. <laughs> Growing up in elementary school, bullying was probably the biggest thing that I had to deal with. I was raised so, so, so normally. The people I was surrounded by, my parents treated me so great. I had no idea that I looked different. I couldn't see. When I saw other kids, I couldn't see that I was smaller than them. I couldn't see that I just didn't look like them. And so my first day of school, no one wanted to sit by me. No one wanted to talk to me. No one wanted to play with me. When we got to the playground, I made my way up to the top of the playscape to go down the slide and there was a long line. And when I got there, everybody moved. And you would think, yeah, VIP to the slide. <laughs> but it wasn't like that. They were moving because they were scared of me. For so long, I had to ask myself, why me? Why God, why do I have to have this syndrome that nobody has? Why can't I wear the regular clothes that people my age should wear? Why can't I dress like the popular kids? What did I do to have this syndrome? Why do people have to call me ugly? Why do they have to call me skinny bones? Why? Every night I would go home and I would cry myself to sleep and I seriously would pray that I would wake up and look like everybody else so that I didn't have to deal with the bullying. Luckily, when I was growing up, when I was younger, I never had to deal with the physical bullying. I dealt with all the name calling. One of the biggest things that I want you to take home today is knowing that sometimes words hurt more than actions. You can sometimes call someone stupid or dumb or whatever it may be and then think, I was just kidding, I didn't even really mean it. To that person that you're saying it to, it could hurt them so, so bad. They could be having a really bad day, then you say, you're so stupid, you're dumb, whatever it is. That could just be the tipping point for them. As I got older, I was kind of starting to become more aware of my condition and more able to say, you know what? I am just like everybody else. So when I was in eighth grade, I decided I'm gonna try out for cheerleading. I honestly didn't even wanna do the workout part. I just did it because the uniforms are really cute. So <laughs> I did it and I made it. And after I made it, after I made the squad in eighth grade, I decided I like being a people person. I want people to get to know me. So I joined everything I could. I was a staff writer for our school newspaper. I was on the yearbook staff. 
I joined drama. I don't even like acting. I did cheerleading. I was taking dual credit for college courses. All these things, and I loved it. I was finally starting to get to a point where I liked myself, and I wasn't having to deal with bullying. Nobody was calling me names to my face. Then I found the YouTube video. So I went from a point of being really kind of proud of who I was to then being introduced to the world of cyberbullying. It's not only YouTube comments that I'll get, it's emails that people will send me and say, go kill yourself. Or they'll say, kill it with fire. And they're referring to me, a human, as an it. All these things kind of just started really getting to me. And once I started high school, I had a lot of great friends, but I still kind of started thinking, I wish I kind of looked like the pretty girls. I wish I could do what they do. I wish that boy would come and talk to me. I'm funny. I'm fun. I have good hair. <laughs> I started getting to a point where I was just like frustrated and annoyed that I was having to go from people judging me because of the way that I look. When I saw this YouTube video, trust me, I sat there and I was ready to tell every single one of those people off. I was ready to hit my keyboard and make them feel as low as they were making me feel. I was ready. But then I started realizing, what is that going to accomplish? Absolutely nothing. I'd be fighting a never-ending battle. I'd be sinking down to their level and hiding behind a computer screen and telling somebody else off. I don't know who they are. I shouldn't judge them. So I let it go, and I told myself, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know when I'm going to do it. But I'm going to show these people that they aren't going to win. Those bullies are not going to define who I am as a person. So I decided, once I kind of getting towards the end of high school, I decided I was going to set four goals for myself. First goal, motivational speaker. Second goal, publish a book. Third goal, graduate college. Fourth goal, have my own family and my own career. I, of course, was still dealing with people staring at me in public. People saying, if I'm with my friends or if I'm with my parents, they'll talk to my parents while I'm standing there and say, oh, how old is she? What is she doing? And I'm like, I can speak. Hi, how are you? I set these goals for myself and I started working. I started working as hard as I could and guess what? I'm on my sixth year of motivational speaking. Goal one, checked off. Second goal, by the time I was 21 years old, I published my first book called Lizzie Beautiful in English and in Spanish. Guess what's even better? My second book came out on September 1st of this year. My second book is called Be Beautiful, Be You, and that book has been like my little baby, and I'm so, so very proud of it. And I actually have a table back there, and I have copies, and I can be there signing for them. Anyway, my third goal was to graduate college, and guess what? I'm graduating in December. I'm graduating from Texas State University, and yes, I came all the way from Texas, and it is very cold here. <laughs> I'm graduating with a degree in Communication Studies and a minor in English. My fourth goal is to have my own family and my own career, and the family part is down the line. I'm only 23. And the career part, I think I've got a good start on it. But all these things, I look back, and I look back from the day I was born, when the doctors told my, told my parents, don't expect her to talk, don't expect her to walk, you're going to have to take care of her the rest of her life. From day one, I was told I couldn't do these things. Then I was being stared at, I was being bullied, 
Then I started getting people calling me the world's ugliest woman. All these things were kind of just kept stacking up against me. But guess what? I decided, you know what? I'm proud to be in the skin I'm in. I'm proud to have this syndrome. Every single one of you, every single one of you sitting in here has something to be proud of. Don't let those bullies tell you you can't do something. Don't ever let them tell you you're not good enough to do something. Because you know what? If somebody says, Lizzie, you can't do that, you'll never do that, automatically in my, in my head I say, mm-hmm, dare me. <laughs> Tell me I can't do something and watch me do it probably better than you can. I might not look like Kim Kardashian or all the people on the magazines or all these famous movie stars. I don't look like that, but I don't care. Because you know what? You don't have to look like a gorgeous celebrity. Be who you are. Be proud of who you are. The best way, the best way to get revenge on bullies is to fight back with your accomplishments. So now if I see people who are kind of staring at me and judging me and thinking, what eating disorder does she have? What's wrong with her? I kind of want to go up to these people and say, hi, I'm Lizzie. Maybe you should stop staring and start learning. Thank you guys very, very much. I'm such an honor to be here. Thank you. Again, I'll be back there in the back and thank you. <laughs>